Hi, my name is Kevin O'Leary. I'm a UX designer here at Acquia, working on the Spark project, which is a Drupal distribution aimed at improving the content authoring experience. What you're going to be looking at today is um, a prototype of our responsive layout designer, which is um, a tool that we've been putting together and working on for several months, and we're really, really excited about, which takes the experience of creating responsive layouts out of the realms of code where they are right now and, and creates a UI for users to, to be able to do that without having to um, write any code. And um, it does so in the context of Panelizer, which already provides a great deal of really uh, cool functionality for being able to manipulate layouts and add content to your layouts. And this essentially just adds the, the component of being able to create multiple different layouts at multiple different breakpoints for your different devices. Um, we're really excited about this work, and we're really hoping to, to get this integrated into Panelizer and into our Spark distribution. But right now, this is only a prototype, and uh, there's no code behind this. So we're hoping to get people in the community excited, as excited as we are about this, so that you know we could get some uh, some help in actually making this a reality. So um, what I'm going to show you is uh, right off the bat, we've got um, a way that we can configure breakpoints. So you see this this uh, link here, and it links to an overlay that shows me what the breakpoints are. I've got standard and smartphone right now. I can add um, a breakpoint, so um, it just defaults it right to the middle. But then I can type into these text fields, and I can make this 768 and uh, name it tablet, and then save that. And then now that's going to appear right here in my layout. So uh, I've got three tabs right here, smartphone, tablet, and standard. I can go between those and see um, you know, what those different layouts will look like. Um, when I start out, everything is just in a single column, because I've done no layout work yet. And there are a number of default regions. Um, the advantage of the default regions is that um, if I, if I want to switch between layouts once I, I've created several layouts, I don't really have to do any uh, region remapping because um, I will have used um, these standard named regions and content that's in, in, in one re region will flow right into the other regions. So um, I'm going to show you adding a region. I click here. Um, now, currently in Panelizer, we have add a new region. What I've added is add an existing region. Since we've given the user a library of default regions, I'm giving them a drop down that shows them that they can pick one and add that. Um, now, if we go over to the add a new region, you get the standard Panelizer functionality, region title, CSS class, fluid or fixed. I'm going to cancel out of that. And now I also have this X in which I can um, remove or hide a region. Uh, if I remove it, it's removed from smartphone, tablet, and standard. If I hide it, I'm hiding it just for this step, just for smartphone. And I have a little icon here that's going to show me there's a hidden region here, and I can show it again if I want to. So I'm going to show that. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and show you what happens if I remove several of these and create a, a subset of regions that I want, it, want for a specific layout. So if I click... Um, uh, several of them and, and, and then remove them. Now I have a set of, you know, a smaller set of regions that I can work with. And uh, I can tab over to tablet and start laying things out. Smartphone, that will pretty much be my smartphone layout, but um, uh, tablet will, can have, um, you know, a, a different approach and standard can have its own, its own layout as well. And the way we do that is these grippers along the side are, um, the way that you can change the widths of these columns. And the way we think about this is it's like an upside down game of Tetris. So if I pull the width of a column in, the, the, next, um, the next region below it, actually I should call it a region. If I pull the width of a region in, the next region below it is going to pop up into the space that I vacated by, by reducing the width of that region. So um, in this way I can pull things from the left, from the right, and, and rearrange uh, my layout uh, exactly how I want it to be. So let me show you that. If I click here on subheader A, I'm sh this is showing how uh, I'll get um, this hover affordance, which is the hand, and then when I, when I move it over, I'm going to get a grabber, and I'm going to see this arrow that's showing me that this subheader B will move into this area right here. If I continue to move it, um, it pops up into that area. Notice also that I've, that I've shown the grid whatever grid the user has set in that breakpoints um, overlay is here. 
So it's, show, it's showing that, and it's also snapping to that grid. Um, so if I grab at this end, I can move this uh, over to here, and now subheader C has popped up into this area. If I grab um, the body over here, the body region, move that in. Now sidebar A popped up into that area. So now I'm going to show you moving a region. So if I, if I use the standard grab handles here, drag handles, and, um, and I decide that I want to move this title region above these three, this is a different kind of an action from the other action. What, I, what actually is going to happen here is that I'm going to change the DOM order. So I'm going to get, the, the user gets an overlay that's going to tell them that this is get, going to be changed in all of the layouts because they're actually changing the order of these regions in the DOM. So smartphone, tablet, and standard will all have title above these three here. So I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to show you selecting. So I can select this region and then shift select over to another region. All the intervening regions in between will be selected. And I have the opportunity to group them. So I, uh, this is how nesting is done. So once I create a nested group of regions, that also persists across all my states, but I can do different things with it for different states. So for instance, I can grab this gripper that's now spanning all of these rows, and I can drag that to the left. Now sidebar B pops up to the right here. But I could do the reverse of that in tablet and pull my left hand gripper, and then sidebar B would pop up to the right. And this is how we can have completely different layouts across multiple steps in a responsive system um, with just CSS and not using any kind of JavaScript or anything like that. And we're also educating the user as to how the logic of, uh, of responsive design works. So um, it's also possible to create uh, subnests you know, uh, within this, and it's recursive however many levels you want to go down. Now, um, if you tab over to content, the next step for the user after they've created their layout is that they just populate it with content. And um, these uh, regions will be labeled, and you'll have a, um, a gear which is going to give you the, uh, the exact functionality that you have right now in Panelizer of um, being able to add your panes and put whatever content you want, and also um, be able to tab back and forth between your various different layouts that you created in the designer and see how the content is flowing into um, those different layouts. So that's the functionality that we've, that we've designed, and uh, we're really excited about this. We think, like I said, that it's really um, unique, and uh, it, it has the potential to really um, revolutionize this space. And we're hoping to get some help in actually um, coding this, because as I said, this is just a design and that no code has actually been, been built yet. So uh, that's it. Thanks a lot.